Right, let's see if this beast will fire up. We need you. Never in doubt. I, I'm lying, I was I didn't think it would start. Right, as you can see, we are silaging today. So we need to go and do some hedge bashing first. Chief Bush Basher. I've been called worse. <laughs> Anything else? Uh, so. Essence of Shepherd in here. And the Essence of Shepherd? What? Is that the new fragrance by uh... <laughs> Paco Rabanne? Yeah. I'm gonna sit on that. Five foot eleven, aren't you? Yes. <laughs> Land Rovers were built for. Actually, if you're, you're over five foot ten, because I'm not five foot eleven. But you fit in perfectly. Uh, but not really. <laughs> Just making the gateway a bit wider because uh, I couldn't get in here with the mower the other day. It appears I've hit rush hour. The man in a green jumper in the way. So we've opened up one gateway. We're going to open up the one that John's currently walking towards. Because uh, we're going to have to come through that gate to get into the field here. Because of the angle that the gateway's at. Splendid job done. Now this is an absolute pain in the hole to put out of it. I must admit, not as bad as this one. Though. Prefer it to this one. Yes, this one. Because that mirror, that just looks at that house, doesn't it? Well, it it's one of those curved mirrors, obviously. But the thing is, you can see everything, yes. but nothing. <laughs> if that makes sense. Checking out some grass that doesn't belong to us. Yeah, because we need more grass. Yeah, we really need more grass. So we got enough. <laughs> no, we were just pulled in. Proper Devonshire Lane, this one, look. Grass down the middle. <laughs> yeah, that's not a central reservation, you know. <laughs> that just lets you know that this is a main road. So, good morning, tractor fans. You would have just seen me and John uh, clearing out some gateways. We've got to go to some ground that we have that um, we haven't silaged in a couple of years. The gateway has become a bit overgrown. So we just wanted to go out and clear them this morning before we head there with the forager. Just make sure Craig can get in all right off the road. Um, you might notice I am not in my normal track. I am in the uh, 6620 known as Big Boots. And there's a good reason for that. Sadly, my tractor has let me down. So yeah, slightly frustrating, but um, we'll just have to see what happens with that one. So we're in Big Boots today, Rex was driving this one yesterday, but he is away judging sheep at the Bath and West show. So I hope anyone that's been to that has a good day. He's actually um, judging the Oxford Downs, I believe. Rex uh, unfortunately didn't have aircon working in this thing yesterday. John's nicked a relay out of another tractor, and if I turn that on, you might be able to hear we've got working aircon. It does only work on flat out, though. Say that. Yeah, it only works on flat out. But it keeps me cold, so that's nice. I did get some drone footage yesterday. I forgot to bring my camera to work yesterday. It's mad, isn't it? The biggest silage day of the year. Bad junction. Our biggest silage day of the year, and I left my camera on Mr. T at home, charging. I mean, I put it charging so that it had enough battery to do the day yesterday. I just really forgot to pick it up. I left my drone yesterday, so what I'll do is I'll show you some drone footage um, from the first film we did yesterday. It includes a lovely big John Deere, a 330 that um, we had in from BG Pierce. Um, Bernie himself came done some hauling for us yesterday so you might as well enjoy that drone for a minute whilst I'm on my way back to the field. What's 
your story? What's your sign? It's like we're twin flames in a different life. Deep connection, lights a spark. It's like you know me in the depths of my heart. We're dreamers. the first field. I think Craig's just put in some additive in his No, he's not. He's getting, getting back in soil oil. Finished the first field for today, so we're off to the next block of ground, where me and John were this morning, uh, clearing out the uh, gateways. Hopefully I get a chance in a minute to get out and film some. I've always been at the front of the queue and then um, Craig's been waiting for me to get back to the field. It'd be nice if there was a couple of trailers in the field so I could get out and do a bit of filming, but it doesn't seem to be the way so far. Now, having just had a close call with a car, I thought I'd have a couple of rants on my way to the next block of ground. Now, I know getting stuck behind a tractor is extremely frustrating. Uh, when I'm on the road behind one, I get just as annoyed as everyone else. But, they're not on the road to annoy people. They're to do a job. If you do get stuck behind a tractor, don't get right up the back side of the trailer so close that you can nearly reach out and touch it. That is the worst possible thing you can do. I had a van following me back from um, tipping at the farm just now. And if it hadn't been for the fact that I saw him coming from a little while off to get up behind me, I wouldn't have had a clue he was there. And if I'd had to stop suddenly, or if I'd stopped and started going backwards, but if I met someone, I would have gone straight into him. I wouldn't have even realized he was there. There's a saying that goes round that if you can't see my mirrors, I can't see you. And it's very true. You just need to, you know, keep a bit of distance from a tractor, a trailer. If we can pull in, we will. And only ever pull out around us when it's safe to do so. Some people overtake you in the most horrendous places. Just because they've got to be somewhere two minutes quicker than they would have been had they not met you. Right, seeing as we've got a few minutes before the others get here, might as well show you what we're driving today. So this is Big Boots. Uh, 6620 John Deere. Um, I think they're about 125, 130 horsepower, something like that. So very similar to the 130, um, just with six cylinders instead of four. Um, comfy enough tractor to drive. This one's got a replacement seat in it because the other seat went wrong. But um, plenty of power. Um, and John got the aircon working this morning, so that's spot on. And then this is our Fleming trailer. So this one is the only one we've got with a hydraulic back door. But uh, again, nice trailer to pull, nice wide tyres. Here is the grass here, so this hadn't been turned out, this was just rode up last night. And uh, it's crispy on top, you could nearly make hay. But it is nice and green still, down in the middle. Now none of this ground here has had any fertiliser. So you can see what it was like from the edge there. A lot of it's gone to seed. Um, and to be honest, that is just going to be belly filler. For, uh, for the dry cows. I left a patch over here because there are some wires that um, don't want to get anywhere near with the forager, so just left a piece here. Yeah, you can see this. There is some leafy stuff in the bottom, but a lot of it's just this. I don't know what, don't know what type of grass it is, but that's what it is. Stalky, stemmy, um, belly filler, as you call it, for dry cows, which is exactly what it will do so that's fine this is one of the gateways me and John had a square up in this morning so that gate we actually unhung it the other day when I come with the mowers it used to go out sort of that way um, it just makes it easier for Craig to get in here off the road like this I think I can hear him coming <laughs>
unlock his wheels here. Side, isn't he? There. It is a horrible junction if you, if you miss it. Well, well you yeah, don't I, know where it is. No, well, I missed it with the mowers the other day, and I went in the little bit behind the house there, and then trying to get out of there with a front mower on was an absolute nightmare. So you fold out the wheels there, and then there's a little green handle in there you have to put into uh, either work or transport, it just stops this from flopping down on the floor. Yeah, we're going to stop and have a bit of dinner. <laughs> He's found his way here now. I didn't miss the junction this time. <laughs> right, let's get some dinner. I left the dog at home today just because it was uh, pretty hot. I knew I'd be driving this tractor and yesterday the aircon wasn't working. So I thought it was kinder to leave him in a nice cool environment. What's your weakness? What's your type? Somehow I want to know all about you. We'll finish up that little bit there. Me and John are in the next field, ready. I think the Grice will probably come to the next field as well. So I better get out of the way because I'm currently blocking the exit. 6, 5, 20 power. So because of the back lanes around here and the roads being so tight, we have to go across this you know, grass here, which Rex will graze with sheep eventually out these double gates, two little wooden gates, about the size of one normal gate. And we've got one field straight across there, and then one down the road a bit. But uh, I better negotiate this a minute without having my camera on in the road. There she is, look, what a beast. It's great. Ready to go again. I just have to do a little bit of stuff on the computer in there. Same. That one's a little bit older. 
That is some dry silage. Look at the dust coming over that. I'll come back unless I have a phone call to say otherwise. How heavy is it in barn close? So definitely heavier than this. It's similar to the first field, probably a bit heavier. So here's an interesting one for you. A big pile of grass there. The back door on John's trailer wasn't shut quite properly, so we had to tip it up and let a bit out to then be able to shut it. It's got those hooks that come up and sort of hold a plate in place, but uh, it wasn't quite shut properly. We're on the way home with the last load. We managed to uh, put that stuff that had been through the trailer once already back through the forager. Cheers, John. See you again, Ross. So we tidied all that up. Craig's behind me somewhere on the road. Ross has just gone back the other way, so he's heading home. We'll get this load back in the pit and then uh, Set two sheeting it all down. Right, we're finished. Last load is tipped in. Ollie's just pushing it in. There is a hell of a lot of grass. Look at this. I don't want to kill myself. No. <laughs> Guarantee if I went up there, I'd have the thing coped over against this. You'll be down here. Yeah. Wedged. But like, where did you want? You wanted it there, didn't you? Yeah, good. That's where it yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. This is uh, definitely fuller than last year. It'll sink a bit, won't it? But yeah, it will be a bit. I was just saying, we always manage to put some really dry stuff on top, just to, <laughs> just to really. To be fair, we've done a good job, haven't we? Really? Oh, I did a hell of a job. It looks quite impressive with you here with a fork and <laughs> Yeah. All my own work. It was all me. <laughs> just a sheet and just the sandbags. I and agree. then the straw on our second one. Yeah. Which we should in theory be using this winter. Yeah, because we reckon we'll use this for dry cow feed. Yeah. And that'll sit there till next winter and be dry cow feed for the following. Yeah. Look at this. Yeah. Ollie has done some job in here. To pack all this in. He was about level with the wall last year. I mean, Ollie's good on a fork, but have you seen this man? <laughs> a PhD in this. <laughs> yes. Pick up that lump of stuff that I left Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's double chop. <laughs> yeah, that's literally double chop. We got all good intentions, didn't we? We cut that early bit. Uh, the bales. Beginning of May. Yeah. Thought, right on. <laughs> then the weather. The platform. No. Yeah. I think we've got to sacrifice science. <laughs> We're going to... <laughs> Give up on the reason we're here. Yes, and just make good cow fodder.
So guys, we're just coming down to the pit now. We've covered it all up. There it is. I think you'll agree with me that Ollie did an absolutely incredible job of stuffing that grass in there. There is 702 tons of grass in that pit uh, and it's 40 meters by 12. So we thought we were gonna have approximately 600 ton or something like that. But um, yeah, 702 tons fresh weight of grass has gone in that pit in the last 24 hours. That is our first cuts now all done. Um, we got some bales to make at some point and we'll have hopefully some really good second cut to make for the young stock. That's gonna feed dry cows, probably not even this winter, that'll be the winter after. This in here is the second cut from last year. That'll be the dry cow feed for this winter. We'll probably mix that with a bit of hay we got. Yeah, we need to make some good good silage for the, um, for the young stock and also the uh, techno cattle that come in that we want to be growing through the winter. Say so a big thank you to um, Bernie and Ross for doing trailers for us and also Ollie for doing the buck raking. Um, it's obviously a busy time of year for them. Everybody wants them on trailers or buck raking and they've all got their own work to do. So thank you to those for coming in. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. Um, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. That would be awesome. There are loads of links in the description to other social media channels that I run. Um, if you want to check me out on Snapchat, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, anything like that, there's a link down below. There's also a link to merch. You can find hats and hoodies and a few shirts as well if you're interested in any of that. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you on another video very soon. Cheerio.